Welcome home, no matter where you find yourself on your spiritual journey, know that you are welcome here. We come on this Christmas Eve to worship God. <coughs> We gather to celebrate the gift, the gift of a Christ child who came and gave his life for us that we may live. Good evening and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 
on behalf of the session of First Presbyterian Church Bowling Green, I bid all of you welcome. I'm glad you were here. Please sign the fellowship pads that are found in the pews recording your presence and letting us know if there's anything that we as uh, your church staff can, can do to help. I have three announcements. One, the church office will be closed starting tomorrow until January 8th. Now, if you need pastoral concern, care, then call the church office, leave a message. It will be checked every day. Send an email. It will be checked every day. And my cell phone number is there. Um, I will be on vacation, but uh, my phone number is, is there. Uh, to, and also to know that um, Ed is having a concert on January 1st uh, at Toledo uh, what? Museum, thank you. 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock January 1st on this incredible little box organ. And everyone needs to have a candle. We do have fire extinguishers nearby. Uh, are there other announcements? Huh? I want to introduce you to our Advent family today. Um, it is going to be the, the Alta Cotting families. We have three generations with us tonight. Over the course of Advent, we've had different types of families lighting our candle. And tonight we are honoring the extended family. Thank you. So we have come to recognize the gift that God has given us. So as you pass the peace of Jesus Christ, the Merry Christmas greetings, Merry Christmas, and to all a good night. Is that what you do? The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Share that peace with one another. And do all of your number two.
During the season of Advent, we have been lighting a candle each week as symbols of our faith pilgrimage. We relight the first candle. We relight the second candle to symbolize our prayer for peace. We relight the third candle to symbolize the joy we have because God is with us. We relight the fourth candle to symbolize God's love for us. We have spent four weeks of Advent preparing ourselves for this night when we symbolically journey once again to Bethlehem to find the Christ child lying in a manger. Tonight we light the Christ candle that symbolizes the one who is the focal point of our faith. Tonight we light the candle that symbolizes God's light shining in the darkness of our world. In joyous thanksgiving, we acknowledge God's gifts of love, this, this child so generously given that we might experience God with us. On this Christmas Eve, may we be open to receive this wondrous gift. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we pray that we come to know deep in our hearts your love for us. May we be open to share with others the love you have given so abundantly, and in doing so, keep Christmas throughout the year. Help us to leave the Bethlehem Major and continue to follow the Christ who calls us to follow. Amen. Please join me in reading responsibly the call of worship. Those who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and their joy has been increased. For to us a child has been born, to us a son has been given, and all authority rests upon his shoulders. He will establish his kingdom among us and uphold it with justice and righteousness. And his coming, the world will be filled with rejoicing, and the faithful shall witness it together. Oh, come, let us adore him. 
and sing an exaltation for our Savior Jesus Christ is born.
Isaiah, ninth chapter, verses two through seven. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For Israel will be great again, filled with joy like that of reapers when the harvest time has come, and like that of men dividing up the plunder they have won. For God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scourges them. Just as he did when he destroyed the vast host of the Midianites by Gideon's little band. In that glorious day of peace, there will no longer be the issuing of battle gear, no more blood-stained uniforms of war. All such will be burned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice from the throne of his father David. He will bring true justice and peace to all nations of the world. This is going to happen because the Lord of Heaven's armies has dedicated himself to do it. Here ends the reading. Let me invite the children to come forward. Children, young at heart, any just come on down. It's Christmas time. Come on down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's some more in the back. Yeah, drag them. It's okay. I don't want to go. It's okay. It's okay. It's not the first time that's happened. Yay. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. I've got a gift for you. I want you to look at the manger scene. What is what is missing? Jesus is missing from the manger scene. Why? How come Jesus has not been in the manger scene all Advent? He hasn't been here yet. Why? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're going to get a sneak tonight, okay? I've got a present for you. Who's the youngest here? Can you, can you open the present, please? What do you think it is? It's the best present in the world. So be careful. <laughs> so there's a story that's in the scriptures that was that Bob's going to read more of it later. So what is it? It's Jesus. Imagine that. <laughs> Jesus is the gift and we get to put Jesus. Can you put Jesus where Jesus goes? There we go. So there's a story that I want you to help me tell. About 2,000 years ago. There was a couple, and she was pregnant. What was her name? Mary. Now, Mary had, had a, a, a significant other, and his name was Joseph, okay? And they went from, according to Luke, they were up in Galilee, and they came all the way down to Toledo. <laughs> Now, now, to where? Where did he go? Bethlehem. And Bethlehem means bread of heaven. Okay? So he came down, and, and what happened? He got to the Holiday Inn. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's not the way I know it. Okay. So he got to the Holiday Inn, and he, uh, he turned on the TV. No. There was no room. Now, you're going to hear that really that there, there was no room in the guest house. So what did they do? They went out to the field and started shepherding, right? Yep. yep. In the garage. In the garage, okay. So they are in and they put the, the baby in a playpen. A food trough, okay, okay. But it was a nice one, right? With hay in it. 
that, that gold package, right? Right? And so Jesus is laying there, and all of a sudden, um, the little ladies from the church come by. Yes. And what did they offer? Gifts, okay. Gas rolls, right. That's what we would do today, wouldn't it? Okay? So Jesus is born in a man, laid in a man. What? A birthday cake. Yeah, let's have a birthday cake. So Jesus is in the manger, the food trough, and all of a sudden the shepherds are out in the field playing pinochle. And all then and then what happens? The angels, what do they say? Go to that place. They say, don't be afraid. Go to Bethlehem and you will see Joseph and Mary. And then there's a babe who's wrapped snugly. In a food trough. Try it. And then they left and they went back to the fields rejoicing, right? Remember last Sunday? <laughs> they, went, they went to the fields rejoicing. Yay! Um, I nearly lost it then. Okay, and so then, then what happens? Who comes next? Okay, well, magi, we don't know that they're kings, and we don't know how many there are. Well, <laughs> okay, could be. And they bring interesting gifts. They bring a Nintendo and an Xbox and an Etch-a-Sketch. No? What did they bring? <laughs> Myrrh, frankincense, and gold, according to the scriptures. Now, some people say they're three wise men or kings or magi because they're three gifts, but they're three gifts. But we don't know how many there were. And, and it's, you know what's real interesting? We've already moved from the Luke story to the Matthew story. And you know where the magi find them? In the house. In the house. So somehow, the church took them in. I don't know. We need to read these stories carefully and because we add things. But the message is what? That Jesus is the light of the world. Do you know why we celebrate on December 25th? What? Okay. Maybe not. What? What about how? What, what's the what's the solstice? Okay, pretty sure it wasn't in December. But why? Why would we celebrate this? Yes. It and it, the, two days ago was the longest night, the winter solstice, and so Christ is the light. And so we, if you notice at the beginning of the service, Jackson brought in the light, symbolizing the light of Christ. And you know what's cool? We're going to turn all these lights off, and we're going to light this place on fire. No, we're going to share the light. And then when we go from here, we are to be that light. Jesus Christ was born, and not only born in Bethlehem in a manger, but is born in our hearts. Now, when we were singing, Glory, it, it was nice in my heart. I love seeing this congregation sing because they know the story. So keep living the story. So the story doesn't end here. It continues every time we tell or show the story. So Merry Christmas. It's now... And we can live that each day. Let's come around the communion table. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you. For the gift of a little itty bitty baby. That comes to us even today. Let us sing. Let us praise. Let us glorify you.
And all God's people said, Amen.
<laughs> hard act to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm going to be compared with the children's uh, uh, <laughs> event in reading Luke 2, uh, verses 1 through 20, the old but always new story. About this time, Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the nation. This census was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone was required to return to his ancestral home for this registration. And because Joseph was a member of the royal line, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, King David's ancient home, journeying there from the Galilean village of Nazareth. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was obviously pregnant at this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel appeared among them and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. They were badly frightened. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. And how will you recognize him? You will find the baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. And suddenly, the angel was joined by, a, joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang, and peace on earth for all those pleasing him. When this great army of angels had returned again to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story expressed astonishment. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and often thought about them. Then the shepherds went back again to their fields and flocks, praising God for this visit of the angels and because they had seen the child just as the angel had told them. The face of fulfillment. Let us pray. Lord, on this blessed Christmas Eve, thank you for the gift. Thank you for the gathering. Thank you for your grace. Remove any barrier that keeps us from hearing your word afresh to us today. That we may go from here telling the story, using words if necessary, the showing the world of your love. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. A woman and her son were prepared to set off to go to the 11 o'clock Christmas Eve service at their church, and the husband, as usual, decided that he would stay back home and didn't have to be bothered with that church stuff. Maybe you know someone like that. As he watched his family leave in the car, he noticed that it began to snow. And while reading the newspaper, the man thought he could hear some knocking out the window, but then he decided he was just hearing things. But then the knocking continued. In fact, it sounded like pecking. And he opened the curtains and he could see that the snow had intensified and that the wind had picked up and then then he saw that there were birds. Not just a bird, but a whole flock of birds in his lawn. And a few of the birds had flown into the window trying to escape the storm. 
It's as if they were disoriented. He could see that they would be in trouble if they didn't find shelter, so he thought he would scare them away by flicking the light on the porch, but they wouldn't go. So the man went out on the porch and he caused a tremendous racket, hoping that they would fly off to safety, but they still remained there in the cold and in the snow. Then the man thought, oh, I have a barn that might offer them shelter from this storm. So he put on his jacket, he went outside, he opened the barn doors wide open, put on the light, hoping that the light would attract the birds to go inside to safety. But they wouldn't come. They huddled on the ground, sometimes flying back into the window at his home. Food. Food will surely bring them. He thought they were like college kids, I guess. <laughs> food, food will bring them into the barn, thought the man. So he went inside, took some bread, went again and outside and tossed the bread crumbs in a path that would lead them into the barn. Still, the birds wouldn't come. Oh, the man said out loud, I wish that I could become a bird if only for a short while so that I could show them how much I care for them and that I mean to offer them life. And just at that time, he hears the bells ringing of the church on the Christmas Eve. That's what we are doing here tonight. With carols and candles announcing the birth of the Savior. Tonight we are retelling the story how God chose to be revealed among us. God's children that we are. God chose to relate to us as one of us. Vulnerable, frail, subject to colds and temptations. Tonight's story is so very familiar that we forget to listen. Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born as a poor, homeless refugee. Our songs make it sound so sweet. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. But God chose the lowly, humble, struggling way to fully participate in life with us. Tonight marks the beginning of Jesus' life on earth, but it does not mark the beginning of God revealing God's self through all of time and all eternity. God has been reaching out to us since the beginning. Showing us how much God cares for us and that God means to offer us life. The Holy Scripture is full of the story of God's reaching out to God's people, to you, to me. But we fail to learn. Fail to learn the way God showed us how to live. Carl B. Reif reminds us that the Gospels were written backwards. First, the disciples confronted the risen Christ. Then, they remembered Christ's passion and crucifixion. Next, they collected Jesus' teachings and stories about his healing ministry. And finally, they reached back into their distant memories to the story of Jesus' birth. The passion. Crucifixion and resurrection were important to those early Christians and only as they needed to go back to the beginnings of Jesus' life did the Christmas story come into being. Christmas was one of the last festivals of the church to be celebrated. It was the man, Jesus, with whom they were dealing. A man who called them to take up their crosses and follow him. The baby Jesus grew up, always demonstrating how much he cared for us and offering us life. There is a tendency for us to keep Jesus as an infant, holy and lowly, and forget Jesus' life of teachings and healings and invitations and promises. 
Remember the rest of Jesus' story. He does not remain a sweet little baby lying in a feeding trough. He is the same one who challenges and calls us to a new way of life. He is the same one who demonstrates for us sacrificial love. At birth and even at death, Jesus promises to be with us. Throughout every aspect of life, Christ is present. Jesus doesn't want your promise to attend church more regularly starting now, or your presence on more committees or volunteer boards, or your commitment of a certain percentage of your income to the church or other charities, or your full confession of all the wrongs and, and a promise to do more rights, or your money, your time, your obedience, your subservience, your piety, or your praise. Jesus wants you. So this Christmas Eve, come gaze at the face of Jesus, the face of fulfillment. The fulfillment of the prophets foretelling, the fulfillment of God's promise to us, the fulfillment of a life of love, gratitude, and service. Receive the Christ. Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please stand with me as we say together what we believe using a portion of a declaration of faith. And together we rehearse. Jesus, the long-expected Savior, came into the world as a child, descended from David, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Mary, a virgin. He lived as a Jew among Jews. He announced to his people the coming of God's kingdom of justice and peace on earth. We affirm that Jesus was born of a woman, as is every child yet born of God's power as was no other child. The coming of Jesus was itself the coming of God's promised rule. Through his birth, life, death, and resurrection, he brings about the relationship between God and humanity that God always intended.
helped if I would have read the bulletin. <laughs> but I like to sing. So we come to the time of the prayers of the people. And I ask, are there any joys and any concerns that you would like to lift before this body? Joys and concerns. Christmas Eve, where we've heard the story and sung the song. We're reminded of how much you love us. You break into this world surprising us by being so humble, so vulnerable, so weak. But you have shown us that love rules our lives. We thank you for the families that have gathered at this time and in this place. For many miles have traveled that we come together to bring us your peace. Lord, there's a world of hurt out there strife of every sort. But we ask that the birth of this child will break into our hearts and teach us how to love, how to hope, how to forgive, how to trust, how to rely on you. So build us into the community of faith that reaches out to all, where all will be welcome and included and at the table. Let us truly sing joy to the world. Let us truly live this life that you have given us with abundant love and care. Lord, we pray for those who are away from families at this time. We pray for our military families. We pray for our government and our leaders. We pray for those who are all alone. The Lord, help us to be your children, caring for one another. So let us live the prayer that Christ taught us as we recite together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory of God. Tonight we are celebrating a gift, a gift of, of new life, a gift of new ways of living. And one thing that this church has committed to do is to serve all. And so in our offering back to God, what God has given us, we'll receive an offering, trusting that the session will be used for those times to allow Jesus Christ to be proclaimed to all, for Christ welcomes all. Give as you have been given.
Lord, thank you that we have the ability to share. Thank you for the gifts that have carried us this far. So bless this gift and bless the giver that we may tell the world of your gift of love, grace, mercy, and peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, and this is the time that everyone will need to get a candle. The ushers are going to come forward and get their lights, and I'm going to turn all the lights off. And a little instruction will need to be had because we are Presbyterian and we do things decently and in order. When you receive the light, you will take the light that's lit, stand right straight forward up. Have your candle come into that, then you have the light and keep it up. Okay? That keeps the wax in the little thing and not on your hands or anyway. So ushers are going to come forward and we're going to be singing in the dark for a little bit, but you know the words. So ushers come and get your lights. Because here go the darkness. How about that? Christ's candle, that Christ's light will be known to the world.
raise your candles. There's a light, and the light dispels the darkness. And so we will go from here telling the world of this child that changed all of history and changes our lives. So friends, as you receive the gift of Christmas, may you also receive all the blessings that God has to offer you. And may God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deeply and from the heart. And may God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of others so that you will work for justice, freedom, and love. And may God bless you with tears to shed with those who are in pain, pain of addiction, incarceration or disease so that you will reach your hands out to them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with foolishness to believe that yes, you can make a difference in this whole world by doing the things that others say cannot be done. So with all these blessings and the Christmas cheer, go. Singing, go. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.